Hey, my name is Matt Storr, and I repair saxophones for a living. I also have a cold today, so pardon my voice. But I wanted to show you uh, a pretty easy trick for getting nice-looking key corks. Now, I use a lot of different materials, um, synthetic felt and regular felt and uh, synthetic cork, which I'll show you as well uh, among them. But I also use uh, real cork, particularly if I'm trying to match uh, like an original job or something like that. Um, so, but I had noticed that a lot of the key corks I saw on, you know, like original pads, saxophones from the, you know, 30s through the 60s, looked really, really nice in comparison to the cork we get today. And first I had sort of ascribed that to just, you know, general quality decline over time. And then I realized I actually cut it in a different way. Um, so this is a sheet of cork like you would buy today. This is a very thin piece. You can see what it looks like there. It's got these kind of hard parts in it. I think those are called pregos. Um, and that's much harder than the surrounding cork. And there's also sort of a, you know, porous surface. Some are more porous than others. It depends on the quality of the cut. Um, here's a nice high quality piece of 16th inch key cork. You can see what that looks like. Um, but I noticed that the older corks I saw just looked different and were a lot smoother and I eventually figured out what they'd been doing. Um, and the way you can get a key cork to look super, super nice is get yourself some quarter inch thick cork, like here, a super sharp razor blade. This is a Persona Gem, I believe it's Teflon coated. And you actually cut it like this. And there is a really, really nice looking piece of key cork. Now let me cut ahead and cut another piece. So like right here, get that out of the way. And then right here. So this would be like a blank that I would cut a piece of key cork from. And you can see that we're cutting in a different part of the grain. Um, and you can see how nice and flat and beautiful that is. And obviously we'd cut around the, these are pregos viewed lengthwise. Obviously we'd cut around those, so we'd end up with a piece of key cork that maybe looks something like this. And that's a nice, beautiful key cork that doesn't seem to compress very much, at least relative to regular cut cork. It seems to compress a little bit less actually. Um, and looks really, really beautiful and doesn't absorb nearly as much water or cork grease or oil that's on the saxophone. So I think this is a you know fairly well-known trick. Um, I figured it out just by looking at stuff because um, I am mostly self-taught, so I kind of come across things that are well-known to others um, the long way around, but I figured I'd go ahead and share this to save you the trouble doing so. My name is Matt Storr. I repair saxophones for a living. I hope you found this helpful, useful, informative. Go ahead and check out the Open Source Saxophone Project, and feel free to give me a call, send me an email, or leave a comment here if you have any questions. Thanks for watching.